ask all of you to have your eyes closed for a moment. Can you please close your eyes? And imagine, what does it feel like when you are somewhere on your own, feeling vulnerable, unsafe, or exposed in an open area where you feel, where you're scared that your body might attack by something or someone. Can you imagine if you feel that, if you experience that? These feelings is experienced by many people out there who still have no toilet. You can open your eyes. Or put yourself in a situation when you feel vulnerable or ask yourself, what does it feel like when you have to use a toilet that's something not similar to the one you have at home? Or what does it feel like when you have to use toilet at your work workplace where the wall room of the toilet just next to where your workmates are and you're worried that they might hear you when you make a noise? <laughs> or what does it feel like when you have to happen to use a toilet with a high tech, with lots, with, with lots of command in it, and that's your first time using that toilet. But at the same time, you're rushing to go to an important meeting, but you have to flush the toilet, clean yourself, and yet there are people waiting in the line to go in to the toilet. Just during the break, I went to the toilet and found a woman who was busting to go to the toilet, but when she opened the door, she found, oh, squatting toilet. So she, she walked out, even though she's busting to go to the toilet. So many of us would like to prefer type of a toilet that we want to use. Some of us want to use private toilet. Some of us want to use a very quiet toilet, where, of course, you don't want people hear you when you make a noise. Or relaxing toilet. Or I myself, I want a toilet that smells nice and have a music background in it. <laughs> when using a toilet, you want to make sure whether the door is locked, whether it's safe, is there a water, is there a toilet paper, is it clean? And at the same time, your heart is moving fast, you're feeling anxious, feeling vulnerable, where in a moment all you want is just confidence and peace. But imagine if the toilet is not even there. So, toilet stirs strong reaction out of all of us, no matter what type of toilet is that. Toilet really do change our behavior. I'm an engineer. In my daily job, I deal with designing toilets, and as well as hygiene promotion for behavioral change for children in remote area. When I design a toilet, I have to think about how people or children can interact with the toilet because it's such a personal thing. From my experience, most of the time when people talk about the toilet, there's always negative impression about it. Dirty, smell, disgusting, dark, or anything related to unpleasant place. But what it is, is it's supposed to be the other way around. Don't we think so? People always assume that toilet is something that's simple, nothing complicated about it. And often, it's just referred to just a toilet. Or to some others, that's not even an important priority in their life. A study worldwide from Water Aids or a joint monitoring program that conducted by WHO and UNICEF in 2015 shows that globally, 2.43 billion people, or one of the third world, one third of world population, still lack access to toilet. And the study also talked about one in eight people worldwide still practice open defecation, 
or for those who doesn't know what is open defecation, is when you go shits out in the open public. 315 children die every year because of diarrhea due to dirty water and poor sanitation. That's about 900 children per day. Or let me put it this way. Think about the aircraft Boeing 777, that the seat capacity is about 440. So that's like two aircraft Boeing 777 that cross every day. Can you imagine that? And the study also talk about the amazing, the amazing fact that from this study is talk about how people have more access to toilet uh, to mobile phone than toilet. <laughs> the least developed countries until now still not met the sanitation target, and only 27 percent of their population have gained access to improved sanitation. And Timor Leste is included in the least developed country that need did not meet the sanitation target. Even though we know 16 years ago, or since 1999, there are many toilet projects that given away, but we still haven't reached the target. So if we say this is just a toilet we talk about, something simple, why until now, when there are more and more technology that advance or innovative idea, but still, there are a billion people out there that lack access to a toilet. At the workshop, when school to, uh, conducting a school toilet handover, I talk on how to use toilet properly and how to maintain, operate and maintain them. A local leader asked me, why do you have to invite all of us here just to talk about toilets? And according to him, do you have to come as an engineer just to talk about sheets? So I'm an engineer known as a female engineer and deal with fesses. Or in other case, when I was asked by family, friends, who knows me as an engineer, but curious to know what I do as an engineer, every time they ask me, what do you do as an engineer? I told them spontaneously, I deal with human fesses. I deal with toilet. The moment when I talk about it, their face expression kind of confused in disgusting kind of way. And some family member even say, do you have to study engineer just to deal with toilets? <laughs> so, will that affect much if we don't have a toilet? Or if we don't practice hygiene in our daily life, is that a big deal? A focus group discussion that conducted by Plan International Timor Leste, they gather information from children in remote areas regarding their thoughts when they don't have a toilet or when they use when they go out open defecate. The focus group discussion divided into three groups: boys, girls, and girls with the age 11, 12, and above. The boys say they feel unsafe. They often experience unpleasant situation or how I call it, I call that as unfinished business. Because from their story, they say when they do number two, when they have to do it, when they do number two and they only do it halfway, but they have to run because they were chased by a farm owner with machete or how we call it here, katana. Or oh, girls, or oh, girls, they feel insecure when they have to do open defecate out there because they are worried that people might watch them or attack or possible do sexual harassment to them. Some girls even say, some girls even say they, they worry that animal or snake might bite them when they do open defecate. Or girls with the age 12 and above, they often feel embarrassed to go to school because when they reach puberty, because they were teased by their friend, Japanese flag. That's, I remember when I was little, I was worried when I, not little, when I above, about 12 or, or above, I was worried that when I go to school, if I get my period, people will tease me as Japanese flag. That's when your period comes on your skirt. <laughs> or let's not go that far. I'm an engineer. I work with water department. I design nice toilet at home. But the place where I live, there's no water. 
so I cannot practice hygiene in my daily life. I feel unpleasant to use the toilet because it will create smell. So what I want to say here, the boys' unfinished business is they lose their concentration when they go back to school because of the no toilet. The girls' unfinished business is they're missing out classes or often drop out of the school because there's no adequate toilet or no safe environment for them. Or well, my unfinished business is I cannot practice hygiene. I, I lose concentration to go to work because I cannot use toilet with water. So toilet is something that people should have for granted at school, home, workplace, or public places. But remember, when we talk about toilet, it's not toilet itself. It, it comes with the package. Toilet, water, soap, and the behavior change, to, the behavior towards the toilet. And also when design a toilet, we're not only design something that we think nice and implement it at the target area. We have to think about what are the contexts? Who are the beneficiaries? Is there water available? What are the different needs that need for, needed for toilet design? How to locate the superstructure and its orientation? Is it secure? Is it safe? Is it comfortable? Especially when you deal with children, you have to think about a design that child-friendly. And the most important thing is sustainable. Timor-Leste is a country that have heavy rainwater in some months and have a lot of water in some areas, but also in other areas, or especially like in remote areas, sometimes it's very difficult to get water. Now, I want to ask all of you to look at this toilet. Sorry, my hand before was like keep pressing and then it just shows already. Probably you feel disgusted by that. Have a look at this toilet and think about if your children, your daughter, your son, your nephew, or your nieces use this type of toilet at school. Can you ever imagine that? Or, or you can start now. Imagine if your, to your children's using that type of toilet. That toilet is actually a clean, uh, a nice toilet in the beginning when it designed, when it constructed. It has a nice tiles on it, but the problem is there is no water. So what happened, the users will, when there is no water, the users will start throwing stone because they clean themselves with stone, corn stick, paper, leaves. So when they clean themselves, they throw it there into the toilet hall. And what happened is it will accumulate and it will create smells and it will draw them back to the open, open field to do the, to do the defecation because it smells, they can't go back there. So for someone to design a toilet, to think about the importance of how long, how sustainable the toilet is. And if not, they will go back to the field and open defecate and they will face another issue. I'm sure some of you have known familiar to this diagram. We call it F chart, according to water sanitation and hygiene term. When you open defecate, your feces, we call it 6F. Remember that, 6F is feces that contaminated through your fingers. When you play with the field, the dust will go to your fingers. And if you don't wash your hand, it will go to your mouth. Flies, when you open defecate, the flies will go there and eat your feces and eventually go back to your home. And if you don't close your food, the flies will eat your food. And what you, you can say that the feces that you take out, it will go back to your mouth. Or fluids. Fluids. When there's a rain and if you open defecate, it will draw the feces, go back to the, go into the water. And if you drink the water without boiling it, 
then eventually the bacteria from the feces will go back to your mouth. So I want to show you another picture here. This is a type of a toilet that I involved in designing it. In terms of cost, it costs a little bit more than normal toilet provided to children in remote area, but it has two types of toilet hall. In a toilet, it has pore flask and dry pit. But the important part from this design is it has lock in it. So whenever there is water, people will use the pore flask and then unlock and lock the dry pit. Until whenever there is no water at all, dur during emergency situation, or use it as, as, a, as an alternative um, uh, solution, they will lock back the pore flask and use the dry pit. Toilet with its package, so we say toilet with its package or toilet that sustain will change behavior, will save life, prevent girls from drop out of the school, or increase student achievement at school. And overall, when addressing the toilet issues or sanitation issue, we are ensuring the good health, the clean environment, and also human dignity for all. So I would like to call an action for those people, for people who are all, all of you that here in this TEDx talk, and also people out there, to keep spreading the information about the importance of having toilet, build a toilet that lasts longer, sustainable, that can fulfill the demands or the, the demands or the needs of people worldwide, women, children with disability, or children in general, boys and girls. Whether you're government, private investment, social, civil society, for one to provide or design a toilet, you have to think about the sustainable part. And you have to think about that toilet comes as a package. Not toilet itself, but water, soap, how can overall you practice your hygiene in daily life. So let's not address only the need of a toilet, but open defecation problem that is still practiced by a billion people out there. Thank you.